And once again, Chelsea fans leaving Stamford Bridge in disbelief from what they've seen play out from their side this season as it finishes uh, Chelsea 2, Burnley 2. Let's go to the former Chelsea man, shall we? Uh, Frank LaBeouf, how do you sum this up? <laughs> oh, my God. Um... I'm, I'm fed up, in fact. I'm fed up because, you know, you believe that something's going to happen. You say, OK, the season is already over, but you're going to play against Burnley. They play, ten, uh, we, they play 11 against 10, so they're going to win. And they disappear. Nothing happens. Uh, you are one nil at halftime. You come back, and after three minutes, you can see the goal. Then you try to play a little bit. You score another goal. You say, OK, well, that's fine. And then after, it's terrible. And they, as you showed, they, they, they should have lost that game. 11 against 10. Chelsea Football Club against all due respect, Burnley. That's the end of it. For me, that's the end of it. I, I want to congratulate the fans to be able to go, still go to Stamford Bridge to watch that. I mean, come on. That's not, that's not fair for the fans. That's just fair for history of Chelsea Football Club and for the former player that I, 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 I am and, and some others who are watching that and are so appalled about the situation. Um, it's, 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 a, it's unfair to all those people. And I don't know what they're doing there. Players, as I talked before, they have no stamina, nothing in their heart, nothing in their brain, don't know what to do. Uh, do you play 11 against 10, you should thrash that team that you play against and you let them come back and you almost lose that game? Come on, that's unprofessional. That's unfair, again, to those people who love that club. How did it happen, Stevie? <laughs> it's hard to figure out, it really is. I mean, this, watching this, I, I felt like a Chelsea fan watching this because at 1-0, 10 men, you think the game's over. Mm. And the noise from the stadium sort of said that. Right. But then it goes to one each, and all of a sudden it all changes, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Oh, but why should we be surprised? And then they go 2-1 up, and you go, well, well we've, right. we've avoided that. And then it's 2-2, two -two and then they hit the bar, and then it's nearly 3-2. And you try to figure this whole thing out. And at the end of the day, they're, they're just a team that's lost. It's got no real direction on the field. So shouldn't Pochettino be... Leading that direction. But he can't, what is, what, he can't make any change. What changes can he make? He said today that his team lacked the hunger that you need to compete in the Premier League. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe that. I, I just think they're lost. I think you've got a bunch... You could, I could go through this team. Jackson's not a goal-scoring centre-forward. He had two chances today. He should have scored two. You can, you can see the yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, but Stevie, on paper, look at that. I know. Look at that team. Yeah, but that look, team should Mudrick, beat Burnley. Should Mudrick. be 10-man Burnley easily. Mudrick clearly doesn't know what his best game is. He doesn't know what suits his game best. Jackson, he's not a, he's not a centre-forward. Gallagher is stuck between being a guy that just wins the ball, but a guy who's expected to try and make passes and score goals but can't. Fernandes and Caicedo, talk about 200 million down the pattern. They, they both, uh, again, just do a job. I mean, there's, there's no... Wait, where's the playmaker? And the, listen, Cole Palmer, if you take Cole Palmer out of the side... Yeah. Your relegation. There's nothing right. left. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing left. And defensively, they're at sixes and sevens. I mean, it's just a team that is badly put together from the and, and from the biggest standpoint badly put together no not enough people with real strong characters that when things go badly it's right this is what we do we all come in and then we all we're all strong we're all together there's none of that and there's never any of that they just look rudderless and they just and again Everybody will say, well, Pochettino has to sort that out. But if you don't have players in your team that you can rely on and you can be the general or whatever you want to call it on the field, then what are you supposed to do? You can only give so much instruction. The rest of it is down to the players. But when you don't have players who have that in the locker room, they don't, they don't have the ability to lead other men. And they don't have the ability to inspire other players. And they don't have the ability to coax or, or pat on the back or just be the difference on the field. They've got nobody, zero. So when things do go wrong, there isn't, there isn't an obvious fix. There's, just, there's not a fix for this team. Frank? Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with Stevie. And the problem is, uh, 
is is crazy because I, I've I've talked about that a lot, and I'm, I'm fed up repeating myself, but. As long as you don't have people to rely on, as Stevie explained, meaning experienced players, you cannot build anything. When you try to have an academy team because you want to do a trading business, it's what you're facing. You don't have, you have Thiago Silva, he's injured, he's, uh, he's most of the time, but for most players, the father of those players. You should have a Sterling uh, who could help Pochettino in that matter. He does it on the goal that Cole Palmer scored, but he has to finish the action and win the 3-2, and he doesn't. So he's not the player you can rely on, and we saw that last week. So you don't have nobody else. It's a, it's a team of young players with no experience, and as, as long as you're going to stay in that um, uh, spirit and, and way of thinking the a club, you won't be successful, because it doesn't work like that. We are, by experience, uh, seen many times that club who tried that never been successful so you have to mix experience with uh, with youth uh, players and that's how it works it cannot work the reaction today showed that you have no again personality character inside the dressing room uh, because they're too young it's not even their fault um sorry the people on the board destroyed that club that's that's what you have to face and uh, and how you're going to rebuild that I don't know, it's going to take a long time, but you have to change your way of thinking that. Stop the training business, put some experienced players in a, in a summer market, otherwise you're going to face the same problems next season. But they're all on 25-year deals, Frank. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't know. How, this is why I say it's hard to find okay. something. I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to get rid of the players. If you can, because I know with the fair play and everything, you have to buy players. And again, last season, <laughs> Madison, Watt Pros, they're not expensive players. We saw how, how important they've been for Spurs or, um, and uh, West Ham. They, they, you just think, think football. You know, you have people who are there, the scouts, to find the right people. You don't have to spend 100 million to have a number 10. And that's why I'm talking about Madison and Ward Pros. You can find those players who are very useful. We know football. We know the Premier League. We have the experience and can, and can help you out. But if you just go for 100 million young guy who had 20 games in the Liga or French Liga, hey, it's not going to be the, the solution. And, the, and, they've, and they've got lucky as well. Sorry, Shaq. Right. They've got lucky as well. I'm saying without Cole Palmer, this team's got nothing. Mm. Cole Palmer still doesn't know how to play mm. 90 minutes because he still drifts in and out of the game. Today, for the first, first 15 minutes, he was fantastic. He was getting on the ball. He had, he had a lot of shots. Some of them he shouldn't have taken. But then he disappears. He disappears. And then he reappeared with about 15 minutes to go in the second half. And when he reappears, all of a sudden, Chelsea change. So even the best player they have still hasn't figured out how to play in 90 minutes yet because he's so young and inexperienced. Here's the thing for me, and, and while we, we criticise Manchester United wrongly, and, and, and rightly so, um, it's almost easier to do that because you know who those players are, what they're good at, what they're not so good at. But I, I really struggle to figure Chelsea out. Um, other, other than putting the, the price tag into some kind of context, this, it, it just feels like a god-awful team. But how do I sit here and say Caicedo's a god-awful god player? Mm. How do I sit here and say Enzo Fernandez is a god-awful player? But that just every time I see Chelsea play, that's just how, that's where I feel their level is. So, it's, so to, to, to my, my original point, it's almost easy to criticise Manchester United because you know when Rashford's good, what he's going to do, when Bruno Fernandes is good, what he's going to do, and you could go through the entire team and say that about their individuals. With Chelsea, other than reputations, you can't really put your finger on who does what well for Chelsea. What does Modric do? This? I, where, where should he Modric, is, Modric is scoring for, for Ukraine during the international, international window, and you think, all right, bring some of that back. You know, and then, again, given this, given this performance, if you just look at Modric today and then ask the question, what does he really do well? I, a neutral observer, observer can't give you an answer.